Reverend Father, give the blessing. Blessed the kingdom of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace from on high, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy church and for all who enter with faith, reverence, and fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our holy father, Francis Pope of Rome, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our most reverend Metropolitan William, for our God, loving Bishop Milan, for the venerable presbyter at the diaconate in Christ, and all clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our government, for all in the service of our country, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city, community, and for the faithful living in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for those who travel by sea, air, and land, for the sick, the suffering, the captive, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Have you be delivered from all affliction, wrath, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Protect us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady the Theotokos and the Virgin Mary with all the saints. Let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, o Lord. O Lord our God, mighty beyond description, glorious above understanding, merciful without limits, loving us all beyond expression, look with compassion on us and the Holy Church of Master. And show us and those who pray with us riches your tender mercy. For to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, is your glory, honor, worship, now and ever and forever. Amen. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Sing praise to his name. Give to him glorious praise through the praise of the Theotokos. Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever, amen, through the prayers of the Theotokos, oh, Savior, save us, be gracious to us, O oh God, and bless us, let your face shine upon us, and have mercy on us, O Son of God, risen from the dead, save us who sing to you. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and now.
wisdom be attentive. For you are holy of God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever. Be attentive, peace be to all, wisdom be attentive. Rejoice in the Lord, your righteous ones. 
Praise from the upright is fitting. God is wondrous in his saints, the God of Israel, the God of Israel. Wisdom. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Let us be attentive. Brethren, when Christ came as high priest of the good things which have come to be, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation. He entered not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, and achieved eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself up unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. Peace be to you, reader. Wisdom be attentive. God grants me vindication and subdues people under me. He has given great victories to his king and shown love for David, his anointed, and his descendants forever. Reverend Father, who has to proclaim through the gospel of the Holy Apostle Evangelist John. May God, through the praise of the Holy, Glorious, Lustrous Apostle Evangelist John, grant that you proclaim the word of his great power for the fulfillment of the gospel is beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. With wisdom, let us stand and listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be to all. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint John. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, the scribes and the Pharisees led a woman forward who had been caught in adultery. They made her stand there in front of everyone. Teacher, they said to him, This woman has been caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses ordered such woman to be stoned. What do you have to say about the case? They were posing this question to trap him so that they could have something to accuse him of. Jesus bent down and started tracing on the ground with his finger. When they persisted in their questioning, he straightened up and said to them, Let the man among you who has no sin be the first to cast a stone at her. A second time he bent down and wrote on the ground. Then the audience drifted away one by one, beginning with the elders. This left him alone with the woman who continued to stand there before him. Jesus finally straightened up and said to her, 
Woman, where did they all disappear to? Has no one condemned you? No one searched, he answered. Jesus said, nor do I condemn you. You may go, but from now on, avoid the sin. Glory to Jesus Christ. Happy fifth week of the Lent. We're almost there. During the Lent and even before the Lent, the church teaches and challenges each Christian to grow higher in their spiritual life. And this Sunday is no different. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Mary of Egypt, a beautiful saint with a beautiful message to every Christian. What I find sad, and I found it out during my seminary years, that this feast became a feel-good feast story. We know that St. Mary, we know who St. Mary is, we know her sins, we know she repented, and we know that she was saved. And that's where we stop. We learn in the book study that it it is like a Christian movie nowadays. A person struggles with some kind of a problem, destroys all of the relationship that person has, realizes the problem and the causes of the problem, turns to God, and immediately change comes and everything is returned to normal, if not better. These movies make me sick also because it is unrealistic. And unfortunately, the life story of St. Mary is slowly becoming the shallow modern story. Bad turns to good. It makes us feel good and then has no impact whatsoever on our life. And if it does, it has very little impact on our life in the long term. So what happened to St. Mary? I would recommend you to read her story today. But in short, from very young age, she struggled with the sin of fornication, which, is, which this sin has many passions that trigger this sin. She seduced men who were on their pilgrimage for the feast of the exaltation of the cross just to get her fix. The sin of of fornication was her addiction. She even stood in front of the church doors and she was trying to get anyone who was willing. But her curiosity got to her. She wanted to enter the church as everyone around her was going to. But she could not. She could not enter the wide open doors because Something was blocking her from entering, like an invisible wall, like somebody was holding behind her and she could not move. She tried with all her might, but she could not enter, while everybody else could. And out of her tiredness, she sat down by the door, confused why she cannot enter, why she's not worthy to enter. And in their loneliness, she saw an icon of the Theotokos hanging by the doors. And that's where the change came. The icon drew her closer and closer. And as she got closer to the icon of the Theotokos, she sensed her purity. She sensed the purity of the Theotokos beyond understanding. When she finally stood at the icon, a deep shame overcame her, and that's where the conscience was awakened. She saw Theotokos giving her all what she had to God. Theotokos gave her own will to God, and she was rewarded beyond measure. 
while St. Mary gave her own will towards passions, earthly and bodily desires. And what happened? She was rejected. She was unworthy to even enter the church, let alone receive blessing or Eucharist. Then she realized why she could not enter the church. So St. Mary repented to Theotokos and begged Theotokos to intercede for her to God so she might be worthy to enter the church and venerate the holy and precious cross. She was granted that gift and she entered and venerated the holy and precious cross and ran away to the desert where she lived a life of repentance for the rest of her life. Keeping her promise that she gave to God at that very moment where the conscious was awakened. She ran away. Why she would do that? Why she would run away? Why did she not stay in that city, rent or buy a house, and try to live her life as holy or as Christian as she possibly could? And many people nowadays, they approach this kind of story and they challenge the saint and they say, well, they fled. The saints fled because they did not believe that God forgave them for their sins. And this is, kind of, this is wrong kind of thinking. Yes, God forgave them immediately. But that does not mean that the wounds that we ourselves caused on our soul and body, that they were healed immediately. It doesn't mean that the desires are quenched immediately. All of this healing and quenching requires time and effort. And these to be saints knew it. They knew that if they stay in the same place, surrounded with the same temptations and same friends, they will also fall again and again to the same sins. When we read the fathers of the church, like St. Cassie and St. Nicodemus, uh, St. Uh, Isaac and other spiritual fathers, and even our spiritual father of this church, St. Ignatius, they teach that the confessing of sins is the half of the battle. And the other half is even more difficult because we actually have to start repent and to heal the soul and body through constant repentance. St. Nicodemus in his handbook on spiritual life, he writes about every single bodily sense and how we should guard these senses and not to fall into the same sins. For example, he says that Christian should not own a mirror because this mirror will make us fall into the sin of self-love. He also writes in another chapter about guarding of the taste of, of taste. And he says that the mouth is a limitless Hades that will never be quenched. And the other saints say the same thing, but in different ways. The fathers of the church were radical. They took their life in Christ seriously, and they were always watchful on their senses because they knew that if they don't guard them, they will fall into the sin. That's why they are saints. They were able to guard their senses. So when Mary, St. Mary's conscience awakened, St. Mary knew that the only way is to run away from the world from anything that she could be tempted of, she made this drastic change in her life. She was not satisfied with the minimum or being lukewarm. She wanted to guard her, guard her senses from everything, sight, smell, taste, and touch, and hearing. She gave it all up. She did what all the saints write about, and yet she had not read a thing. 
She was, she was granted that wisdom through her repentance. She wanted to give her, give her all herself to God as the Theotokos did. She knew there is no other way. She did not want to serve two masters, only one, and that is God. See, if you pay attention, her life is not as any modern Christian movie. Her story contains such a depth of meaning. And her story should encourage us to do better, not just for today, but for the rest of our life. We have less than two weeks until that horrible day where Christ dies for our sins. An innocent dies for me for my recklessness because I could not keep my promise I have given him at my baptism. Hearing the story of St. Mary makes me question, what else can I sacrifice within those two weeks? What else could I give up in order to get myself ready for that gruesome day where Christ dies for me? What else could I do to start my healing so when the Pascha comes, I'm ready to welcome Christ? Let's start today. Don't wait until the last minute. Don't wait to push yourself a little bit more in order to be full, in order to fully guard your senses. It took St. Mary years to become holy. So don't expect this immediate change like in those modern day movies. But know when you make that first step, your life will slowly change and you will never want to go back to your old habits, old life, old friends, and old desires. So let's take courage and beg St. Mary to intercede for us. Glory to Jesus Christ. Let us all say with our whole song, with our whole mind, let us say. Lord, have mercy. O Lord Almighty God, our fathers, we pray you hear and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray you hear and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our Holy Father, Francis, Pope of Rome, and from us, Reverend Metropolitan William, for our God-loving Bishop Milan, for those who serve and have served in this Holy Church, for our spiritual fathers, and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, Again, we pray for our government and for all in the service of our country. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the people here present who await your great and abundant mercy, for those who show us mercy, and for all Christians of the true faith. Lord, have mercy. For you are merciful, loving God, and we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever, and forever.
May the Lord God remember in His kingdom all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever and forever. May the Lord God remember His kingdom our Holy Father Francis Papa Rome, our most reverend Metropolitan William, our God-loving Bishop Milan, the interpriestly diaconal monastic order, our government and all in the service of our country, and the ever-memorable founders and benefactors of this Holy Church. May the Lord God remember all you Christians of the true faith, always, now and ever, and forever. Brother Consolbrand, pray for me, my Consolbrand. Let's be in some sort of prayer for this for us. Precious gifts placed before us, let us pray to the Lord. Grant His mercy, only begotten Son, with me are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. Love one another, that with my mind we may profess. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, one in essence and undivided. The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. Let us stand right, let us stand in all, let us be attentive to offer the holy and offer in peace. Mercy, peace, a sacrifice of grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and love of God and Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Oh, let us lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Oh, 
Now let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and just to worship, to worship the Shouting, crying aloud, and saying the triumphal hymn of For when he was about to go forth through his voluntary, ever memorable and life creating death, on the night when he surrendered himself for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and all pure hands and presented to you, God and Father, he gave thanks, blessed, sanctified, broke, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body which is broken for you for the remission of sin. And gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Offer you your own from your own always and everywhere. Especially we as most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious lady, 
Date o toco send the Virgin Mary. Among the first, the Lord, remember, Holy Father, Francis, Popo, Romar, Most Reverend, Metropolitan, William, God, Lami, Bishop, Milan, preserve them for your Holy Church in peace, safety, honor, health for many years, as they faithfully impart the word of your truth. And remember all your people. And grant that with one voice, one heart, we may glorify and praise the most honored, magnificent name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Now that we have commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For the precious gifts offering consecrated that our God who loves us all may receive them in his holy, heavenly, and mystical altar as a Rome of spiritual fragrance and send down upon us in return his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Asking for unity in faith in, and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Master, that we may with confidence and without condemnation there call you Father, God of heaven and Son. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. Peace be to all. And to your spirit. 
Bow your heads to the Lord. Through the grace, the mercy, the loving kindness, only begotten Son, with me are blessed together with your all holy, good, and life creating Spirit, now and ever and forever. Holy gifts to holy people. approach Approach with fear of God and with faith. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Lord is God and has revealed himself to us. The just woman will be remembered for it. Our communion hymn is on page 11, O Holy Spirit.
your inheritance. We have seen the true light. We have received the true light. We have received the true light. We have found 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 the true light. We